Welcome to the 3 a.m. podcast. My name is DJ. My name is Charlie. My name is Sean. Bunch of friends telling stories, making jokes, making light, making uh, dark, making <sighs> dark. Uh, we had a we had a busy weekend. We were in Portland uh, and had a good time. And it was one thing after the other. Came back Sunday night. I flew over there and, and met all these dudes. A couple of our other friends went to the coast. Well, that was fun. Uh, checked out the city. We've all been there multiple times. My wife's from there. MJ's from there. So we go to Portland quite often. Mm-hmm. And we came back and enjoyed a beautiful concert after work on Monday. Uh, Fleet Fox is performed. And dude, that guy sounds exactly like he does uh, when you listen to him in your headphones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great weekend. Yeah. Great weekend. There's the overview. The specifics. Sean and I, <laughs> uh, Thursday night after work, decide to drive all night. Yeah, dude. We left 5, 530. And the plan was, it's a 12-hour drive, roughly. Roughly. Depending on if you follow the speed limit or not. (laughs) Uh, So the plan was, Sean was like, I was like, let me know how long you think you're going to drive. And he's like, I'm for sure going to probably want to tap out around 1 a.m. Yeah. I was like, dope. So I'm trying to rest as much as I can to get ready for my shift to drive. Yeah. And we have our friend Janelle in the back. She's going on the trip as well. And she's just like catching us up on her life and everything she's going through. And she goes, oh. Sean, I happened to run into one of your exes. <laughs> uh, what, what a great way to start a conversation. <laughs> this is an ex from a long time ago. Sean floors it. Well, Sean doesn't say much at that point, but she says, and your ex said. Like Curiosity this. is peaked. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I watched Sean. Just steam. It's it's never a good thing, I feel like. I, I don't think you could follow up that opening line with like a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I ran into one of your exes and yeah. maybe it could be. Yeah. She wants to suck your dick again. <laughs> <laughs> She's always <laughs> And uh, is that all, all, all X's are to you, Dean? <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but what happened was I see Sean like white knuckle. His knuckles get even whiter than they are. Just <laughs> gripping the steering wheel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but I, I could just tell like he's fit. He gets real quiet. And I'm like, oh, no. Anyway, so 1 a.m. <laughs> comes around and I'm like, oh, like, Sean, do you need me to switch? And he's just like, nope. And I watched this man drive from 5 a 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. <laughs> never getting tired, never needing a break. Every hour I like wake up, I look at him, and I'm like, do you need a break now? And he's like, nope. <laughs> he's just fuming. <laughs> Literally on fumes, fuming. Uh, uh, the, the, the gas light is on E right yeah. now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I just wa- I watched Sean be filled with pure rage and it like uh fueled him through the night <laughs> feel, feel the trip yeah. yeah i would just like to say i'm not a very rageful person <laughs> um but what was said was a little basically they said that the person said something just super dismissive <laughs> and sean's like what the f- <laughs> yeah and false not correct but anyway, blatantly false anyways we don't we don't dwell on the past, but I do hold grudges. So, but we did show Just up kidding, at like I don't. <laughs> we kind of did make record time, which I'm starting to like think we might have been Let's going see, a we little fast. Up. No, dude, I was chill, bro. We get there at like 4:30. Yeah, so 4:30 a.m. We're trying to be silent. Oh shit, dude! <laughs> and MJ MJ lives in like a decently creaky house. Her parents do. Yeah, and they have a basement where we're all like MJ spent all day setting up all the beds for us, getting us ready so that we could come in, go to sleep not disturb the house. Yes. So we come in, we sneak in, I sneak down and I get to the bottom of the stairs in the basement and I turn around and I watch man's to my (laughs) left here from the top of the stairs. He's wearing socks and he's trying to sneak. He's carrying both his bags, his backpack and his like duffel. And he straight up just goes, Swoop and falls down the entire stairwell. My man's playing shoots and ladders at 4 30 in the morning. He's like, (laughs) <laughs> like straight up home alone ice stairwell. I was just gonna say, straight up dude. And they set it up. Ke- Harry rather Kevin yeah 
and he hits the bottom and I, I don't say anything. <laughs> and I just watch Sean at the bottom and he slowly puts his hands over his face like this. And he just l- sits there for like a minute and I don't say a word. Cause I'm like, it's not the time. It's not the time. And I'm like, finally, uh, you, are you all right? You hurt? He's like, nope. And just walks past me, goes to his bed and goes to sleep. And I'm like, man, you're, you're having a night. My guy. We've known each other for so long. I think we know how to handle each other in like most situations. Yeah. So when Sean's upset, it's either just some space. shut up or just like damage control. If it's food related, <laughs> some space or some pizza. Yeah. That's yeah, the solution. Space, yeah. Space pizza or, or sp- food. Dude. Yeah. You guys got me figured out. Yeah. I think I do. I actually, the funny thing was, I legitimately, when I walked in the house, was like, I'm not going to take my socks off because I'm trying to be you were more being quiet. You're a good dude. And the stairway, there's there's steep stairs, but they're all wood. Yeah. Oh, but the, and the, just, the, just the like, stairs they are, are very narrow stairs. Yeah. They're like oh, not yeah. normal stairs. It's like, like you sometimes have to you got to walk sideways. sideways. Yeah. yeah. And I like step on one edge and straight down. It's weird. It's kind of like your life. It's like you were just being a nice guy and you got and just, <laughs> <laughs> just went. All downhill from there. Shit. Started started from the top. Now we're here. <laughs> what Sean doesn't know is I got a video of it. Uh, do you want to click on the you video? You do not. You what? Yeah. No. Where is F- it at? Stairfall video. Where uh, Where do I find this? Opening segments. I don't see it. Oh, okay. I do see it. Sorry. Switch that shit over, son. <laughs> Press the thing so they can see the people's. <laughs> that for Bro, I, though. I, I bet you it was, was kind of like that, that not that smooth it was dude i watched this man's just glide down the stairs but he hit the bottom like this and he just <laughs> and then uh, i didn't tell you this but anita texted like 10 minutes later and they're like is everyone okay <laughs> like, MJ's and then mom. like sam the next morning mj's little brother was Dad's like who fell down the stairs last night <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. so then the rest of the trip we got amazing Thai food. DJ has a homie who is the chef for the Timbers in Portland. Shout out. Anthony. Anthony, yeah. Anthony DiCicco. My God. Let's go. We're like, where do my, we go my, eat? My goes, full Italian friend born and raised in Hawaii. Yeah. He, he has like a, pit, a slightly pigeon accent. <laughs> yeah, but a picture full. of an Italian Hawaiian. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. I'll, uh, hey, hello. Huh? <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> Dude, that's that's even more Italian with the pinky up, my guy. He's like uh, ultimate version fusion of Hawaiian. It's, it's like, it's like oh. just a blending of cultures. Is, Hello, is Hadith. Yeah, <laughs> uh, mahalo. <laughs> but DJ hit him up. He's like the chef for the Timbers, and he was like, "Where do we go eat?" And he's like, "I got you. Meet me here this time. Let's go." Bro, Met place. at a Thai spot. Gave him the menu. And we're like, order. He's like, last time, the, the times I come here, it takes like three hours to get in. Yeah. And we got in mad. Fast. It was like 40 minutes. Good luck. It's like, Easy. there's two places. I take people here in Portland to impress them. This is one of them. Damn. So we're hyped. We get there super fast. Cause we get there, uh, right when it, when and it opens. we're all starving. Yeah. And it was Recovery. a good meal, really good meal. Good people. DJ's other homies from Hawaii came and it was just like good times. Yeah. Instant good vibes. Everything. I was, I was thinking about this cause, uh, it's a fusion place and I feel like, uh, I feel like. When fusion first started, it was very shitty. Lawless. Yeah, it was, it was like, oh, wild. we can combine sushi and burritos. Yeah, <laughs> let's make sushi burrito. Yeah, and it's just a terrible idea. There was but no now rules. There was no thought in the fusion. It was like let's just fuse everything. Let's just put things together just cause, like just cause we should doesn't, uh, or just cause we can doesn't mean that we should. But yeah. that ideas had time to uh, evolve, and I think. We actually have good. We have good now. fusion food now. Yeah. And it was really good. Shout out Eam. So if you're in Portland, hit that spot up if you want. Yep. And then one of our biggest supporters in the podcast and big brother in the podcast dude. world. Like when we first started, he found us, dude, s- before our 20th episode. Yeah. He was, was listening. Yeah. Sent in a story. Mans is from Portland. He has a big podcast up with that deals with music. Mm-hmm. And you've heard us shout him out previously but shout out tone mob so blake is our homie very early he was in our dms like yo you guys have something special keep going you will blow up yeah and now we're he actually introduced us to our podcast network we're on the same podcast network as blake yeah anyway we have never done a meetup sean and i have like gotten a drink with him before it was just sean and i 
this is we've never all three of us been in Portland. So I yeah. hit him up super excited. <laughs> Bro, we're in Portland this weekend. Let's meet up. Let's do this thing. Let's record an episode potentially. And he's like, uh, I just flew out. Damn, bro. <laughs> yeah. It was I, so cool. He like just flew to Indiana to record an episode for Sweetwater, which is like music supply stuff. And he's like, I get back literally the day you guys leave. And I'm like, damn it. So we like just missed each other. We were like in Idaho on the way back driving when he texts us. He's like, I just got back. If you guys are still here, I'd love to get back together. <laughs> Nada, my friend. No, sorry. Oh, my and then we did the most Charlie thing ever. So. Oh gosh. <laughs> you guys have been you guys have been recognized in the podcast. DJ's been recognized by strangers. Sean has been Kalima's recognized. Kalima's been recognized. Kalima's been recognized. <laughs> the guy who uh DJ's homie, good friend of the podcast, who like helped engineer a couple episodes, but he had a baby, so he had to like take a step back. We said a couple, but it was like six months. Yeah. Straight. Uh he's been recognized. So that's cool. I haven't. And in fact, I recognized two listeners. So if you really want to keep tabs, I'm at negative two. Well, I took it a step further. I'm a creep. Uh, and I know you listeners. Like I watch you. I watch who interacts with us on Instagram. And so I knew that we had a listener who owns a Musubi shop in Portland, which is like dope. It's like, dude, Musubis are like half of our identity yeah. as a friend group. Easily. And they happen to listen to 3 a.m. So I was like, let's go hit them up. But by the time we got to their shop, it was closed. Yep. So what did we do? We respectfully just left and didn't do anything. That's not true. Incorrect. We I were... just happened to have a sticker in my wallet. And so like absolute creeps, Sean just slipped the sticker through the letter slot in the door <laughs> and watched it fall on the floor. And then we skedaddled out of there. <laughs> so if you seen that, it's because you're haunted <laughs> yeah. by 3 a.m. Anyway, so yeah, we're, we're creeps. And then we went to the beach. That was a, fun hit, a hidden Pacific Northwest beach had a bonfire, we had a bonfire on the beach. I actually put a photo of it on notion. We oh. were there till like 1130. We were there late and we didn't get home. S'mores. Till late, bro. It was, it was beautiful. It was, it was, uh, not a lot of places you can still do fires on the beach. So it was a treat. And DJ said the last time he did it was when he was like a six year old in Hawaii. Cause it's since been outlawed. Yeah, it was a it was a beautiful time, and dude, we were at the beach till like eleven thirty, and Portland's two hours away from the coast, <laughs> so we were there for for a while. At one point, I was like, "We have a two hour drive, and when we get home, everyone needs to shower." So, <laughs> oh, dude, and when we got back, the power was oh, out. Yeah, the power was out. <laughs> Did was the power out at the place you were staying at, Deej? Yeah, it was. It yeah, was, it was in like the same the block. block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it won't open because it's a different format. H E I C or something yeah. like that. No. Uh, Give me a second. Um, while you're telling that, uh, I realize why I've stayed friends with. Uh, okay, no, that's a stupid way to preface this. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna say, uh, Anthony and I have a very similar uh, uh, human experience. In that, we both have. F- up legs. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> That's the oddest thing to bind you, my friend. <laughs> and because of that, we've uh, we've stayed friends for all this time. Wow, dude! And it's a uh, it's been a beautiful reunion. Um, Explain yourself. <laughs> uh, we're eating dinner, enjoying it. This uh, oh, the fusion was Thai and American barbecue. So we had like we ordered like fifteen different dishes, and we all like dipped in and tried a little bit of each, and like they had like. White curry so with good. burnt wow. ends. Um, it was it was just great. But uh, I was like, "Yo, tell them the story about uh, the hot dog." And if you ever grew up, aka the gagger, the, the gagger. gagger, yeah, uh, we're officially calling all hot dogs, wieners, bratwurst, glizzies, uh, glizzies, gaggers. There you go. So, um. Is that, t- t- tell them about tell them about the gagger. It's like oh, okay, so we're in Hawaii. My aunt and uncle and all their kids. Uh, my cousins are are also tight with Anthony, and they have a boat. And one of the boats, or uh, one of the toys they have with the boat, is the gagger or the <laughs> hot dog. And it's when it's like a banana tube or a yeah, hot dog tube. Yeah, five mm-hmm. people are like sitting on it. 
in like a train, uh, holding onto the straps. Your, your legs are locked in as well into the straps, riding it like a, like a bicycle. And they're whipping it around. And Anthony falls off, but his leg gets caught. And you, should, you should tell the rest. Why me? Because you have a fresh take on it. I can't remember what my take okay, was. Okay, then. Um, <laughs> yeah, a- Anthony gets thrown off anyway. He's drug underwater because they don't know he's thrown off for like 10 to 15 seconds. So underwater with a tube pulling his leg. Yeah, and they're going what? 30 knots? Dude. Oh my <laughs> God, oh, so many knots. Um, and But you can imagine the pressure. Yeah. They finally realize, they stop, they pull him out, and his leg looked like a shark took a bite out of his calf. And that was like almost 10 years ago. That was about 10 so years what ago. What happened is that like it, the strap pulled and ripped the muscle down his leg yeah. and it looked like a huge, what trunk. is that called with rings? Uh, degloving, degloving, it like degloved, it degloved his, his, leg. his kind leg. of, yeah. One part of his leg. So he, we're in the restaurant and he's like, and this is what it looks like now. <laughs> and he like pulls up, his, <laughs> he pulls up leg. his leg in the middle of the restaurant and, the scars from it. It still looks still, gnarly. Like that part of his leg is like skinny, you know, compared to the it's rest. It's like he never does leg day on that <laughs> specific <laughs> leg. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> and then he got a mad cramp while showing us his leg. And he's just he's howling <laughs> Screaming in, the in the restaurant. He's like, oh, my leg. <laughs> my <laughs> other leg. My other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was my take on it? I can't remember. Oh, interesting. Um, but here's a, here's the... The beautiful picture from the coast and it was dawn oh. misty we had s'mores we had pizza it was great we had breadsticks sunset behind us <laughs> <laughs> um took long walks had good conversation had good laughs it was a good time oh yeah yeah it was good Anyway, Portland trip was amazing. The weekend, the weekend, the weekend was great. <laughs> uh, and it was fun. We're happy to be back in studio to record some of these stories before we do transition to stories. Uh, we get, we get these messages a decent amount. We don't share all of them. I just, just got a message. You just got a message yeah. from be real. It says I have two minutes to be real. <laughs> oh, lame. <laughs> I hate that. What do we think about the, the be real social media? I'm about to get into something app? touching. No, right now. this is this is uh, <laughs> this is important. We only have two minutes. I don't know to I, be real. Uh, Jk, I just want to see you struggle. Okay, what's the <laughs> message that we got? Oh, I mean, I'm not struggling. My thing about be real is like, okay, it's is like it every really social real? media. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got a very sweet message from a listener named Carol. That's all I'll say on her. But she said. Um, I listen to you guys every night to go to sleep. I appreciate it so much when I can't sleep because you guys make me laugh. Found you guys last August. Wait, do we want to share this? Well, I didn't like dox the full thing. Even like the details. Uh, basically she had a family member pass away and some pretty hard personal life things happen all in a row at the same time. And she said it had been years since she laughed out loud <laughs> And she finally, we were somehow able to make her laugh out loud. So uh, just thank you for the podcast. Thank you so much. And that's it. And and, uh, we get these every once in a while. They mean a lot to us. Thank you so much. And just like as other listeners, just so you know, like this community brings people joy. And it's because listeners like you, viewers like you, send stories that allows us to keep doing this. So thank you, everyone. We appreciate you. Shout out, Carol. Uh, We see you. We appreciate you. That was that. Anyway, screw that. Be real, DJ. (laughs) Thanks, Carol, for being real with us. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect way to bring it back. And with that, do you guys want to get into stories? Yes, sir. Sure. Let's do it. Because there's things popping off in chat. Really? Yeah. Okay. I I saw spooky bands get messaged. I don't know. I just saw them get met. I missed that. Mentioned. I think Tembo's here, and she asked what's going on. What up, Tembo, if you're still here? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Charlie trying to get recognized bad. I know, dude, I'm out everywhere on the street. Just trying to get, it's more now it's like funnier, the longer it doesn't happen. So I'm actually going to be really sad when it does happen. And, oh, I want to do this as a bit on the next episode. I want to set expectations for what you can expect to like when, if you meet us in person, 
Mm. So like, I'm going to be awkward as hell. I can, t- I can tell you what that's like. What's that? Oh, I can't, <laughs> <laughs> but I have some, I have some stories to go along with it with like awkward handshakes and shit that I've experienced in my life. Mm. Uh, okay. DJ clutching it with the connections. True. Yo, Penacoco said, I honestly was going to guess spooky bands. I don't know what that's in reference to. Let us know what that's in reference to. Uh, reminds me of the MTV show from the mid 2000s, Scarred. Dude, I used to love Scarred. Yeah, I can't watch it. I can't anymore either. I used to, I used to, yeah. I the show to Scarred, show. did you ever see it on MTV? No. Oh yeah, if you guys need to go, if you guys need to go potty, now's the time before we get into stories. Otherwise you'll pee yourself because you're so scared. <laughs> Uh, oh, when you were talking about one of the first supporters who sent in a story, no, but spooky. So that's what Yopenukoko was referring to. Um, Blake and Yopenukoko both found us, sorry, Tone Mob and Spooky Bands both found us almost at the exact same time. Yeah. And they reached out. It was like that first October. So yeah. we started in like April uh-huh. and then October comes around is I think when they found us. Yeah. And they both like, that's when we started like hitting them up and blah, blah, blah. The rest is history. We have never really capitalized on in October. No. <laughs> this, this, is the year. this is the year this I say we go year. balls to the f- wall yeah. and go crazy. Okay, so what, what do you guys want for October? For us, maybe drop one one merch. Okay. Yeah. Something. Oh, I was going to talk to you. Uh, maybe we throw want, out some other stuff. I like want a black Small tea. stuff. We want to record uh, with other podcasts. Uh, have them on here. We go on there, mm-hmm. vice versa, um, and share scary stories there because everybody gets into like scary story mode. Uh, come October, even if they don't do scary stories, yeah. What's up? Uh, Henry I think the more chat. Charlie talks about not being recognized on podcasts, the more the listeners will avidly know not to interact with him. Dude, I cannot that wait. That is the ultimate troll. If you see me, take pictures and then just don't and approach then don't it. Say- <laughs> <laughs> that's the move. That's that's so funny. Until he recognizes you taking yeah. a picture, like, hey, do you listen to 3 a.m.? Well, hey, I uh, recognize you on IG. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Tembo, I think I started listening to Doc. Honestly, you, Tembo, is, yeah, she was you, one of you the came first around the two. same time. Yeah. Tembo's been around people. for a long time. Yeah. Very long time. I call those like the day tours. The day tours. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> just never say hi to Charlie. Even like at a live show, I'm like, what the f-? I can see it. People are just like, it's that. Oh, I think, I think that's two for three. Let's go. That would freak me out, bro. <laughs> oh, 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 let's go. <laughs> Light the fire for juiced. Cyber. This Thank you so much. Also for the other Thank you, Cyber Juiced. subbed earlier. <laughs> Yo, we're getting close to 100. <gasps> Hell Subs. yeah, brother. For real? I think it's total. Don't, what's the next, what's the next like benchmark for us? I set that goal. No, but like to become, so right now we're affiliates to become partner, partner, partner I think it's 70 a lot. subs. No, it's 70 viewers, 70 average viewers. Uh, and our average right now is like 30. Yeah. We get in there. We get in there. Cool. Brownies and lemonade only had like six. I show we're still on like Sorry. the top 1% because the amount of people that stream, I don't say that ar- arrogantly. It's like, sh- like straight up statistics. Yeah. I'm throwing uh critical success in chat for cyber juiced <laughs> chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those twenties. Fire. you pen coco. How do you guys like our new emojis? Yeah. Slowly. We're adding more things, you know? <laughs> so even today I was work DJ and I, uh, while we were at work, <laughs> not emojis, emotes, but another, let's go. Put it out, relight it. <laughs> oh, five more. Subs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, bro. bro strange. That's like 10 today. <laughs> Sean actually does it. I love it. Dude, y'all are very sweet. Thank you so Damn. much. Damn. Thank you. Thank you. Hype train. We hit a hype train. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, should should we gift a sub? Can we gift? Is that possible? I think we'll so. We'll figure that out. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else is on deck for October and just like other things? October... I mean, we have plenty of time to like figure out what we want to do for October, but we definitely need to go all out this time. Um, as far as other things, uh, what else have we talked about? Maybe releasing a new sticker. We've oh. talked about that. We'll add stickers. I definitely want a shirt. I'll talk to like you. a black tea. I want a black tea. Yep. In my black tea. Uh, 
we're definitely going to guest on people. We're going to get more guests. I want to, I don't know. There are a couple we'll people talk. that, yeah. If you guys have ideas, DM us or we hit a hundred. So go. Oh, Bless. Thank you. Big we got to unlight the fire and light it again. I'm sorry. We can't just do it for one person. Dude, thank you. So- <laughs> this thing specifically says, do not blow out the fire. So. <laughs> Because it's alcohol based. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're it's literally come back to bite me soon, dude. Thank you guys. Oh my god, that's freaking wild. <laughs> I, feel, I don't know what to say or do. Uh, thank you. Um, Another live. Oh, dude, we need to do a live show. I lives are kind of my favorites. The dude. only thing that's holding us They're back so is fun. DJ's fear. <laughs> Let's talk about it on pod. On pod, dude. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Lots of things. Explain to why be honest, you're dude. wrong and you need to change your. <laughs> why I hate. Why I don't want to grow. And- yeah. <laughs> why? But, but honestly, like, uh, let's commit to a live episode in October, dude. That's the time. That's when we reign. Yeah. Supreme. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna start looking for a space. A space would be sick. I mean, personally, outdoors at like one of these amphitheaters. Okay. Can you look into how we rent sick. them? Turkish. Thank you for uh. Thank you for subbing. Thank you, Turkish. Thank you. Can you look into how we rent an amphitheater? Yeah. Amphitheater, rather? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, does anybody know how to run Streamlabs? Streamlabs? Because uh, I have a bunch of alerts set up, and they're not going off. So so if you got, if anyone out there knows how to run Streamlabs, DM us. We'll jump on Discord call, and you can help us make it make this production better. DJ's done an insane amount in a short amount of time, but we're always open to help. Cool. Uh, let's jump into stories. Let's do it. You guys down? Yes, sir. Uh, wait, real quick. Uh, dude, the last, the last two days, I have been dealing with pestilence. <laughs> <laughs> Literal plague shit. And uh, yeah. And uh, it's not nice. It's not nice. Uh, Monday morning, I was rudely awakened. Oh, shit, dude. By... A flying insect in my ear. Oh! It jammed in my ear and was deep, and I could not get it out. I like, I like tried to like pick it out of my ear, and it's like it's an impossible task, you know. I don't know what <laughs> actually is in my ear, so I like, I wake up. Sean's already up working from home. He's sitting on the couch with his laptop, he has his lo-fi hip hop playing on the TV, and. uh I grab some tweezers and I run. I was like, Sean, there's something in my ear. Take it out. What are you feeling at this moment? Uh, I'm like, uh, l- l- my reaction is like, what the hell is in your ear? <laughs> because I've seen some gnarly ass videos of like shit in people's ears. <laughs> and that's my immediate that's reaction <laughs> is the worst possible scenario. <laughs> and he like starts digging in with these metal tweezers, you know, and going to work. <laughs> Grinding through my eardrums, taking a beating. And uh, he's like, I can't find it. I can't find it. Uh, I was like, it's there. I hear its wings flapping. It's buzzing oh. in my brain right now. Somehow he's just like, are you just grabbing? I was kind of like, g- not grabbing, but like pushing like the edges to see if I could like see further in mm. stuff like that. And then I saw whatever it was. I was like, oh, okay. and then I kind of reached down further and grabbed Dude, it. Operation IRL, the yeah. game of operation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it was the and DJ's tiny, just buzzing. It was. A, <laughs> it's the tiniest thing. It was like a gnat size thing. No way. Yeah. 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 And, uh, that, that ruined my morning. Could not go back to, <laughs> could not go back to sleep. And then, uh, the next day, was it last night? No, two nights, two ago. nights ago. I'm on the phone. It's like just past midnight and I hear some rustling in my room. There's like a little Amazon package by my door and out crawls a mouse and then runs out underneath the door into the hallway. And I'm so pissed. I'm like, why the hell is there a mouse in our basement? Like, yeah, why? So I chase this thing out. I find it in like the living room kitchen and it runs behind like this styrofoam board from one of our packages. First of all, brave. Uh, I'd be screaming. <laughs> it's like, I don't want this thing. I, I want to know where it is and I want to deal with it. So right. it runs behind the styrofoam thing, leaning against the wall. I was like, this is the best case scenario. 
Yeah. It's right up against the wall. So I grab like some of the boxes from those packages and I like just box it in and, uh, and ship it back to Amazon. <laughs> yeah, ship it back to Amazon. Um, and I can see it. It's there. I have it trapped. Anyway, it takes me about an hour to do this and like try to get it inside a box. And I finally did got it in a box and I disposed of it. Did you like it run, out, run it down the street or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked on somebody's door. Ding dong. Dude. Just Just doorbell it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Uh, but you did some investigating where did this rat come or where'd this mouse come? Oh from? yes. I was okay. I was like, why two days in a row? Literal critters. Yes. <laughs> roaming through our house. Yeah. Where's this coming from? So I'm searching. I was like, our house is sealed up. We're clean. My room's hella messy, dirty laundry, but, but no like food. Not, or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like disgusting food on the floor. Um, like something has to be open. And if you remember our camera overheats sometimes when we record. So with that, we'll open the window to cool it off because sometimes this room gets really hot and we open this window. You can see Charles in the corner. Damn. It's still bright out. Yeah, dude, it's still light. And the window wasn't closed from one of the times that we opened it. Mm -hmm. And I could see in the corner, uh, lo and behold, uh, a hole chewed through the screen. Nice little rodent sized hole. Yep. (laughs) So close that bitch. And uh, hopefully we see no more, yeah, no, no more mice Got and uh, traps set up. And everything I can now. I can wake up on my own terms. You know? <laughs> no buzzing. No, crazy. Well, I feel like hopefully you're out of the pestilence and critters, dude. First a flood, <laughs> next pestilence Yo. and critters. We're getting the seven like curses from. What, what, are, next, what, what, what are, are the curses? Because like, got, let's look into your future right now. Okay. Uh, well, boils. That what, one sucks. What are the plagues? Firstborn's dead. Okay. Neither of us got first. I rarely. He is a firstborn. <laughs> well, I think, I think you already missed. You already barely dodged that one. Cause you almost died twice last year. Okay. Oh, okay. That one's passed. Okay. That one's passed. We had the sheep's blood on the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Real quick, real quick. People are gifting bits. People are gifting yeah. subs. We what? hit a hundred. It just went off. And uh, thank you all. That Hell yeah. Lot. Thank you. Crazy. Okay. Okay. What? Uh, yeah. What are the other? What are, are the, the other? Plagues. This is like uh, the 10 plagues of Egypt, oh, right? When kill- Moses was trying to save uh, the Israelites. And for those who aren't familiar, literally DJ and Sean's entire for those who- home. <laughs> what did I say? What? No, go ahead. For those who aren't familiar or don't remember, <laughs> DJ and Sean's entire basement apartment was like viciously flooded. Not like, oh, water leaked in. Like, oh, no. A huge <laughs> oh, wave of mud. Wait, did you say that already? <laughs> the flood? I said that's the what flood. He said, yeah. he said yeah. we were hit by so, a flood. I don't think that's one of the plagues. No, dude, that was the Red the list, Sea. You know? Just parting and <laughs> filling our entire basement. Well, one of the, one of the, okay, here it is. One of the things is the water turns to blood. Oh, shit. That was the that first was, okay, that was, of the we'll 10 count plagues. It. We'll count it. That's the flood. Amphibians, frogs, <gasps> a Damn. plague of frogs. Not, or amphibians could also be like like uh, lizards. Are Ge- those amphibians? Geckos? No, those are reptiles. Geckos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, third one, gnats or lice. No, Bro, we got those in the f- corner over there. Really? True. Yeah, yeah, dude, the, yeah at the door. I had the, the freaking Outside? pest control dude Inside. come and take care of it. Every So at the back door where I come in, there's always a thousand bugs on the ground. What, you called a pest control dude? Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. There's pest control coming tomorrow. No, no, no. That was the one that showed up today. So you called a separate one. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. We got two coming? Yeah, well, we had two come already. Okay, so Nats, check. Uh, Nats, check. Which actually is a part of my story tonight. Oh, frick. Uh, Number four is flies. Uh, well. Dude, it flew in my ear. It flies. It flies (laughs) in your ear. Yeah. Uh, Number five, disease on livestock. We okay. don't have any live. Dude, I think we got some yeah. bacon that's a little old, like past the <laughs> expiration date. Bro, your we muffins, get rid of your that. Costco muffins you left over the weekend when we all went to Portland. Which I came have back, dairy in it. Straight up mold. Mold balls. I was like, damn, this so is that, the saddest so thing out. I've seen all yeah, day. Disease on, on, uh, the, the, on the, the, the blueberry muffins. Okay, well, just don't the, buy livestock. Okay, yeah. yeah. Next. Or chocolate muffs, you know? <laughs> uh, unhealable boils. Oh, frick, dude. That's not on me, though. Dude, the last time I was cooking, 
The Stay oil away. jumped out of the fry pan and burned me. <laughs> That's unhealable. Did boils. you heal? I, my heart still hurts. <laughs> uh, and it goes into the second one. Hail and fire, dude. Shoot. That shit burnt. <laughs> oh, that's true. Someone in chat did say reaching. Uh, no, we're not. <laughs> this is These real. Are real. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you. <laughs> you were not there for the flood. I'm just kidding. I seen the whole couch lifted <laughs> off the ground and slammed against the wall. Yeah, that shit was, that shit was actually wild. Okay, is there any more? Locus. Oh, fuck. Number eight. Dude. I mean, like eight of them, or like four of them are bugs. So it's like, yeah, like, like we kind of got <laughs> yeah. those. They all go already. into one. And a mouse. Number nine, darkness. <sighs> dude, well. the power goes out sometimes. Okay. Dude, the, the power. Uh, in Portland. Wait, it, did it go out? Yeah, it went out it in went Portland. Out in Portland, yeah. Dude, the plague followed us. Oh, damn. I need to not be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the number 10, death of a firstborn. I almost died last year. Damn, bro. Everyone like see that cow- courage, the cowardly dog episode where return the slabs. I feel like that's just what's coming at us. Somebody needs to return some damn slabs or something. Where you guys live kind of looks like we're courage, the cowardly dog. Kind of. Oh, yeah. Place. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, that's fun. I'm glad we get to deal with that. Mm. Uh, well, it sounds like it's already over. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Are, are we the uh, afflicted or are we the ones who are needing to be saved? Uh, Depends, brother. Are we the oh, Israelites? Shit. What side are you on? Are we the baddies? Are we the we baddies? We are the baddies, dude. Nah, we're the goodies. No, nah, I'm a baddie. Bro. Who's Pharaoh? The Pharaoh. Who's, who's the head of the baddies? Kevin. Kevin. He's the one who's trying to get possessed and stuff. So, yeah. That it's makes Kevin. sense. The Pharaoh was so stubborn, right? Kevin. Is that what it is? Kevin. He yeah. probably wore something He's green like, on care. his head. I don't care. I'm going to let him die. I'm not freeing them. I don't care. Yeah. That's Kevin to a T. <laughs> he would let thousands die to prove a stupid point. I know. He should follow Kate Bush's terms to run up that hill and make a deal with God. You know? Who's the prince of Egypt? Obviously you, DJ. No, dude. <laughs> it's not me. Obviously you. I think I'm part of the afflicted. He's the Israelites. <laughs> I don't know, Sean. He did save our studio. Uh, yeah, it's true. He did a run around saving. That's so true. It's definitely Sean. It's Prince of Egypt. You're Moses, dog. You're Moses. Where's bro. your staff? Bro, my staff's actually Sticking in my Sticking it to car. Utah Lake. Oh, Make oh, that shit. shit part. Yeah. We could better try that. I'm in. Let's do it. Dude, that'd be sick to be a prophet. <laughs> Not like a new school like one, a where everyone hates you. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't have old, any magical powers. Yeah. <laughs> have you? Uh, they just give you fortunes, <laughs> like fortune cookies. Uh, the old school ones where they be doing shit. Smiting and shit. Yeah. Did either of you see the movie The Mist? Yes. So in that, this is very like similar to what you're saying, but there's one lady in this movie. Who's like a religious who zealot. Who religiously is like, God's punishing us. We need to like do all this stuff and just turns into this zealot and people start following yeah, she her. She gets fanatical. And- it's wild in a space of like two days. Yeah. While they're all stuck here in this grocery store, like in this mist. And that's what that reminds me of. Yeah. So we're going to start freaking out. Soon, so is that I'm, saying? I'm finna be like, yo, follow me. We oh, okay. He's Utah not the Prince Lake. of Egypt. No, he's going to, he's going to abuse his power. No, what? dude, I would, I mean, I have talked about potentially starting like a cult before, oh. but like, that's neither here nor there. Wait, wait I, I want to hear a, what, what prophet do you want to be though? What prophet? Yeah. What, what, what a uh, old school prophet are, are you trying to be? What Bro, power? I'm probably about to get, like what super, biblical. What, what superpower do you want? You know, I you probably will like, be like be friends with the fishies. I feel like what's the, what's, what's his name? Get swallowed. Jonah, Jonah, bro. Jonah and the whale, bro. Dude, bro go, go to Sunday school, dog. Yeah. Dude, Learn read, a, story. read a That's Bible, tight. read a Bible book, dog. <laughs> That's tight. Uh, who's the fool? Samson, who Elijah, dude? dude. Elijah is where it's at. Elijah, bro. Why? Dude, his like coat was magic. Yeah. He, he had a magic around. coat or Elijah That's Joseph and the coat of colors. Dude, he had a Elijah had like he a was the original like leader of pride. Wasn't he pride month or what yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. He had a colorful coat. I dog. think they were. Hey. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Multicolored. Elisha bro tells crazy? the bears to eat the kids. Isn't it crazy how the gays just took pride from us, from the Christians? <laughs> he can't be proud anymore. <laughs> Beware of pride boy. Anyway, <laughs> um, Samson dude, he just he was, be like, dude, strong. Yeah, you just got to make sure you never cut your hair. Pull, pulling buildings down. Oh, dude, I got the long hair. Dude, Samson. Dude, David why, got to why smash. Why am I not, am dude, I not David strong? David did get to smash. <laughs> David got to smash. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, ba- is that bathing? And he was like, 
Mm, Bathsheba. Let's go. Her let's send her husband off to no, war. Li- who's the most bro? Elijah who's the most OP prophet. His, Elijah. I'm telling you, he Elijah or dumb. Elisha. Whoa. Elijah. There's two. Uh, Elisha. He, the only thing that like was kind of cool that he did was when he made the bears eat the kids because they were calling him. Bald. Dude, he got his whole town translated. Dude, and, no, dude, that was Enoch, bro. That's who I want to be, Enoch. <laughs> dude, Elijah. <laughs> Enoch Elijah didn't die either. No, he flew My off man on a chariot. Flew, dog. And, and not just a chariot, a f- Sean. A flaming chariot. A chariot of fire. Again, pride. Flaming chariot. Dude. Gavin DeGraw wrote a song about him. <laughs> bro, this is the nerdiest segment we've ever done. Dude, Elijah's tight. And I tight. love it. I'm here for Elijah's it. Elijah's tight. All you, all you sinners need to get with it. Yeah, next bracket we're doing is <laughs> Old Testament prophet. Who's the dopest you, Old you Testament know, You know who's, who, who's not the dopest? Uh, Job. Job, dude? Yeah, he is was just kind of like. He's no, just, that's no, the dude who got dude. like. All the oh, he just got bent by God. <laughs> yeah, I was like, let's play a fun game. He's like, F- I you. <laughs> and jo- Job is like, cool, this is dope. He just got tested, and yeah. I- <laughs> dude, I feel a little jobby. It's like it's getting <laughs> That's where we're my at, whole yeah. life. Yeah, it's like, can I just have a maybe a break? <laughs> I don't no, know. Like, so- can we just chill for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's blasphemy. Uh, 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 Moses could part the Red Sea, but he also had the burning bush, my guy. Yeah, he got to get lit. That yeah. was weed. That is <laughs> weed. Or that was, uh, what's it called? Ayahuasca or some yeah. shit. One uh, of DMT. the two. Either way, he was like having a good time. Yeah, bro. My brother's in Christ. He got to go camping for 40 years. <laughs> Damn. Dude, that guy, he's fine, bro. He didn't even have to talk his brother, talk to Aaron. Aaron yeah, it's true, dude. Yeah. He got pissed. He cracked some tablets. We yeah. should tell the craziest uh, Mormon prophet stories to all our, you know, all <laughs> the ones who aren't making turn it into to Sunday school, all, all the ones who aren't make all our listeners who aren't going to heaven, you know, <laughs> and then when they yeah, yeah. educate them on all the Mormon prophets that are way better than these Bible prophets, Bro, like we have stories like, and then they wasn't like falling in line. So Tian comes straight, snuck into his, his camp, camp and <laughs> killed that fool with the spear. <laughs> Yo, we have a prophet, <laughs> we have a prophet in the book of Mormon who be sh- cutting off people's arms dude wow. straight up bro wow. you know what i mean just defending people and cutting people's limbs about that off action cuz about that action you think <laughs> yeah. mormons are my, my boy stay strapped with the machete <laughs> you know <laughs> sounds like a west side gun rap song yeah dude the book of mormon is basically the spaghetti westerns of uh the biblical test but it is the spaghetti <laughs> westerns of uh of of uh, uh scripture also religious book of mormon text ripe and full of conspiracy theories Dude, so many they have secret brotherhoods who run shit bankers and judges who take over the country and like systematically bring it down they have secret signs and like ways to get in the brotherhood it the shit is lit dog dude and you wonder why why we're into conspiracy the church (laughs) (laughs) i reconverted right now (laughs) Uh, on this podcast we tell scary stories and in order to turn what order we tell those stories we roll a 20 sided die highest number goes first there are consequences now for rolling a 20 and a one consequence <laughs> i got i got ethnic right there i'm safe okay we all did the sean switched my roll with his dice charles got an eight i rolled a six okay i so, got a 10 so the order is dj charles sean thank you uh, somebody said uh, I'd be Moses because uh, I have the lisp. And he was he was <laughs> slow of speech. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, you pisha p pisha fit. <laughs> uh, I'm a pee real quick. Do you, do you guys have a minute? You guys get down with that? Yeah, you're good. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relieve yourself. <laughs> <sighs> that was that was a uh, that was that was kind of nice. What was just, uh, you know, Talking having, having, <laughs> having good spirits in our conversation. You for know, once. that is kind of nice. Oh, dude. Somebody says, Sean. Oh, Tembo. Ha, Sean is the one who sends a bear onto the teenage boys for insulting. I would do that because I'm like a Disney prince with them wild animals <laughs> and all animals. Yo, how, do, how did we forget Noah? Somebody said Noah. Dude. Yeah. He's just like F the whole world. We're he's, saving my fam. And he's the king of the animal kingdom that's true dude he owns the animal kingdom animals would not exist if it weren't for noah true dude pillar of salt was sodom and gomorrah dude sodom and gomorrah sounds so yeah lit. dude that was that was what a uh, lot 
Why would yeah. like it was lot? a lot. Um, <laughs> it was Lot's wife who yeah, turned, it turned it into a pillar into of salt. salt. They had it best though, because they were in, they were in Sodom and Gomorrah, probably enjoying themselves. Dude, yeah, they probably had a good time before they had a good time, all of a sudden God they just like, destroyed it. Yo, so chill, like- <laughs> chill. You got a dip, and they're like, oh, okay. So they got they they got they bag. <laughs> And then they did. We're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, dude. They were just How like Lot Sodom, and his Sodom fam and were just was. chilling there, like having a merry grand old time. And then like the Lord was like, yo, you got to get out. I'm destroying it. Loki, uh, I think we should do a whole segment where we, because <laughs> remember when I told the history of Hawaii, like through how I perceive it, I think we should do that with Bible stories where it's like, <laughs> like it, I was just peeing and I was like, low key, Captain Moroni from the Book of Mormon is Narda Wick. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, who wants smoke with me? Captain, Mor- <laughs> <smoke me? laughs> Captain Moroni was uh, the like top if you're pick not for with the-, the shits. We're pulling up. Captain you know Moroni I mean? was a top pick for the double XL freshman class. <laughs> <laughs> um, yo, I wish we had a uh, Anthony, my homie from Portland, the chef. He's a great uh, conversationalist, and he's non. He's not Mormon, but every once in a while he'll ask us questions like, "What? Like, what is this?" Or explain me like this part. Uh, I wish we had somebody who was like unfamiliar with that kind of stuff to have like a fresh take. On that. <laughs> oh, so like as an outsider, he could ask, that would yeah. be a good, that would be a good vibe. Good mix. Uh, real quick. The person you're telling the story just message on IG. Oh shoot. They Check they're, that. they're jumping on Twitch. Oh, sick. Wait for him for a sec. Wednesday Bible study with three. bro. I'm down. Cause. Let's go. That'd be hilarious. Dude, yeah. If we just stream the book of more. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're doing the Lord's work. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> just reading. <laughs> bro, that, that has me like PTSD flashbacks. 6 AM. My dad's like, we must read the scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> this, let me sleep. dog. <laughs> Dude, straight up went to early morning seminary for 11 years because my mom taught. Oh, yeah. And she's like, I can't go by myself. I need my three sons to be there just to protect me in case. <laughs> like, mom. <laughs> protect yourself. The Lord is enough. Yeah, get yourself get yourself like a baseball bat and put it in the van or something. <laughs> for real. Bro, people are, they got the knowledge of the, the Bibles, bro. <laughs> hey, that's me. Oh, she's in chat. Hey, hey let's go. DJ, she's in chat. Sorry if I doxed you, but this next story DJ is about to share. Yeah, I just started a poll real quick. I just am curious of, of our, uh, our, our following is, uh, yeah. So you have a minute. I am sinner and yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? Alexis. Hell yeah. Welcome. Madison. Where's the poll, Tembo? If you're watching on your phone, you won't see the poll. You have to be watching from like a computer. Yeah, you can see it on your phone. Just kidding. It's down in chat. Go look for poll. You might have to like look in chat and press like a drop down menu or something. I am dead, LMAO. I read more on the first time. Dude, Eh, synonymous. Yeah. (laughs) But add that to the list of uh, endless jokes that we've received as Mormons. Yeah, it's like uh, LDS or LSD. (laughs) Oh yeah, let's get that let's get that light turned down a bit. Bro, am I the only sinner in chat right now? Well, anyways, I'm a sinner, y'all. Dude, I can't not look at that lamp and not say one if by land, two if by sea. National treasure is just how I roll. It's how I express myself. Dude, we only have three Mormons in chat. <laughs> That's kind of nice. Let's go. That's how I like it. Everyone is now all of a sudden like, who the hell is Tiankum? average observer said aren't we all sinners (laughs) you're one of the three (laughs) that's a book that's a book of mormon reference bro (laughs) you ever hear a name and go oh he's mormon yeah hello polynesians love naming their kids after like mormon characters got a lot of of mormon characters nephi's yeah a lot of dude i actually know a kid named tiankum tiankums yeah Mahan Rai Mori and Kamurs. Mahar Shala Al Hash Baz. What the fuck? Mahar Shala Ali. Gazintite. All right, we ready? Let's go. All right. So in chat, we have Alexis, 
otherwise known as Madison. She sent this story in. This isn't uh, very plot driven. It's more of like an anthology. Dope. Okay. Tons and tons of experiences from the moment she was born until now, present day. <laughs> Young girl, she's in college and still has experiences. So this is just a collection of all of those experiences. So I'm just going to run through them. When Madison was born, uh, I think she had some health complications where she uh, was close to not making it. Her dad made a promise to God that if Alexis, uh, if uh, Madison, sorry, getting uh, the username mixed up. If Madison, if my daughter lives, I'll, I'll take her to church. She lives. And ever since, like I said, has been experiencing a lot of things, but has uh, also uh, that experience. She thinks uh, she's, she's always felt like in tune with whatever is going on out there. And uh, she's experienced good and, and bad things, but a little bit on her background, Madison's dad is Mexican. Mom, mom is white. Hello. <laughs> and how do you say hello in German? Uh, hello. 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 Grew up with her parents separated, going back and forth and had different experiences in both locations. Let's start with the first one. At six years old, uh, Madison would stay at her abuelita's place, which is her dad's mom. And they would always leave a radio out. And the radio's purpose Uh, The radio's purpose was to drown out the noise from the footsteps of the ghosts that were wandering in their hallways throughout the night. (laughs) One time they were staying at home. Uh, She couldn't go to sleep because the radio went out. Wasn't working. All of a sudden just hear the. Like some people fall asleep to like the sound of rain. White noise. Luckily. It's pretty silent that night. No one wandering the hallways. She knows her abuelita is still up downstairs washing dishes. She can hear that in the distance, uh, in the, in the distance plates clanking water running. When she hears three knocks distinctly at her bedroom door. I, I, from what I remember, she's, she's pretty terrified of it. Because nobody in the house knocks. Her parents and her abuelita, they just walk in, put her to bed. Uh, She's young, so it's like, why are they knocking? And she's supposed to be asleep. So she's scared. War finally works up the courage to uh, open the door. There's nobody there. She goes downstairs, talks to her abuelita, and asks her, did you knock on my door? No, I've been here for the last half an hour just washing dishes. Everyone else is sleeping. So that was the first experience that she had uh, that she can remember. Moving on to the second one. Madison's brother is sleeping and is awoken by one of their family members walking in to the bedroom. And they approach his bed. And they proceed to sit on his chest till he can't breathe. This is one of the four uh, familiar characters that he frequently comes in contact with during his sleep paralysis. The first one being a family member or something imitating themselves as a family member and sitting on, on his chest. Do you know how old brother is during this? Not sure. Okay. I don't know if he's older or younger. I'd assume he's a child in, in this bit because when she's writing out the stories, she takes them from like the, when she was youngest. So like chronologically. Until, yeah. Present day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chronologically. Um, so that's the first one. We got the family member. Second one is somebody who is always standing in the corner of the room. Faceless. Third one, somebody who's floating above. Also faceless. And four, a man 
who does show his face and comes up to him and says, you will not be here in the morning. Distinctly remembers those words coming from this uh, sleep paralysis figure. Uh, I see Madison in chat that he's experienced this his entire life, even till today. Um, he's a year younger than her. Got you. So sounds like like early 20s or so. So that was the brother. Uh, next, we have she's visiting her grandma's. So Abuelita is dad's mom. Grandma is mom's mom. Okay. Got you. So she's visiting grandma's and uh, it's late at night. Uh, I assume they're on vacation, but she's feeling the munchies. So she uh, goes to grab some snacks. She says her choice were uh, some Capri Suns and some goldfish. Ooh. And uh, she's uh, she just caught up listening to all of our episodes recently. So she threw in some shade and she said, you know, <laughs> these are the usual snacks. Sean, you wouldn't understand with your... Onion okay. grass have an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Onion grass have an ass. I damn uh, really I didn't I, have any Capri Suns. I think until she said I like onion grass on chips my own. or something. What is that? I didn't have Capri Suns until I moved out on my own. Yeah, y'all just had the sun. <laughs> <laughs> this just the sun or Capris, but they were set to hand me downs. <laughs> That's just because you grew out of your clothes. <laughs> they used to be pants. <laughs> can we have Sunny D? You can have Vitamin D <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sean, you're a good sport. <laughs> uh, so she has her snacks. She's a happy clam, heads back to her bedroom. And at grandma's house, they didn't have doors. They had curtains at all the doorways. Madison said, I heard someone walk directly to my curtain and stop right in front of it. And that was that. Continuing, continuing with the creepy things. They're back at dad's. I don't know if this is in Texas. She's she's from Dallas or lives in Dallas currently, or if this is in Mexico at this part in her childhood, uh, living with dad and abuelita. But they would attend church, and this church is not like the other churches. This is a church of Snakes. Santeria. <gasps> Sorry, say that again. Santeria and Brujeria. Madison uh, notes that, one, we weren't allowed to tell anybody that we attended this church, uh, which is concerning. <laughs> and two, we didn't have a Usually choice. Usually churches want to tell everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're like, tell no one. Uh, two, we uh, had no choice. Dad forced us to go. Sick. So. We spent weekends uh, doing Santeria growing up, and this is uh, these are some of the experiences. Uh, first of all, can to, you give us a little background to set? What do you mean background? Santeria. All I uh, understand, I, I don't understand much of it. I, I mean, I think everyone's first exposure to Santeria was sublime. <laughs> to be <laughs> on at least for, I might butcher this. It's basically like, it's a religion. Or a, a faith system that is practiced amongst generally like Latin American cultures derives a lot of its like traditions from African uh, roots. It, it has never been like it, it's a lot more individualistic, and it like takes a lot of roots in Catholicism and Afro American uh, religious backgrounds, and it's a, it's very more individualistic. So like depending on where you are regionally it can affect how you practice Santeria. And to my knowledge, this could be completely wrong. I'm very open to being corrected. Sean, read the, well, let me make this point and then you can read the definition. Um, there is white magic within Santeria and black magic. Which is Brujaria. Which is Brujaria. And it's like, that's not, not the white or black doesn't denote race, culture, ethnicity. It's like high, you could also Just say high or maybe. low. Yeah. Or good or bad. Yeah. Um, do you want to read the? Well, uh, Santeria, Way of the Saints, is an Afro-Caribbean religion based on Yoruba beliefs and traditions with some Roman Catholic elements added. 
Um, the Santeria faith teaches that every individual has a destiny from God, a destiny fulfilled with the aid and energy of the Orishas. Okay. There is a lot and of remedies. Someone in chat said curses. basically the voodoo of Latin America. It, it, that, that's a way to like generalize it. Yeah. yeah. And there's like good and bad, light, dark. So just know that. Yeah. Witchcraft. You can say Latin American witchcraft. Good and bad. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So they're attending this church and uh, just to uh, lay, just to lay the table, you walk into this church and it's dark. Lighting is low like this darker <gasps> medicine to the said to the point where every time we walked in uh, it was pretty much pitch black and we had to f- physically put our hands out in front of us and feel a, our way around the church until our eyes adjusted. Jeez. Yikes. The congregation uh, would wear all white. The women would wear a white top and uh, white skirts, always the white skirts. And one of the leaders of this, this congregation for this church was someone named Teresa. Mother Teresa. Madre. Madre Teresa. And, uh, Madison is, she said, I'm barely bilingual, so I don't understand a lot of it. Yo, Tambien. Trying, trying, trying to keep up. But I know, uh, at least in this specific experience, they're saying prayers. Uh, multiple prayers start, they finish, they do a new prayer. And I think they do about four or five prayers until there's a period of silence. And Teresa who is an able-bodied 40-year-old woman, physically healthy, turns like her her body, like her frame, like almost, it sounds like she like hunches over and turns into a 90-year-old woman. Oh. And thank you, Charles, for the visual representation. <laughs> uh, I think at one point she's like spewing off in like different languages too. But she takes on... This nine-year-old woman who demands everybody address her as la abuelita. The so, grandma. Yeah. Ew. So we have abuelita, her grandma, and la abuelita here. I think technically which is Teresa. the little grandma. Cool. La abuelita's role and purpose here is basically to, to heal people. Uh, and she did it through a multitude of ways. But La Abuelita was there to heal people, and she always was smoking cigars. She loved cigars. Nice. Some of the ways that she would heal people uh, were through different herbs. She'd roll up, spray it with holy water, like rub it on people's ailments, parts of their body that needed healing. And she'd like blow her cigar smoke on it as well. I'm down. Yeah, (laughs) so far. So far. Um, yeah, if somebody can gift us that and not the uh, diffuser, just a la abuelita yeah, blowing smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Capture it in a mason jar, send it to us. Yep. Don't do that. And then uh, a lot of times these rituals would also come with like uh, certain tasks or requirements or warnings to heed, like watch out for this as well, you know, in the, in the coming days. These rituals required payment a lot of the time. The payment that she would, that la, la abuelita preferred uh, were roses, candles, and she also wrote like uh, bathing in herbs, which I wasn't exactly sure what that meant or who was bathing in herbs. It's a bath bomb. A bath goes. bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just taking a trip to Bath and Body and uh, <laughs> checking out La Abuelita. Um, Madison didn't love La Abuelita <laughs> because sometimes she would snitch uh, to her dad about all the boys that she was talking to and flirting with. Like somehow like, she knew. Yeah. Like your daughter, your daughter's oh, been talking. You want her dirty. Yeah. So, uh, that was the main reason. Why <laughs> she, uh, she, she didn't love her. Um, which is snitches. Oh, which is get, get stitches. Dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's fire. Uh, okay. Moving on with, uh, these stories. Uh, here we introduce La Abuelita as a character here. Going back to Madison's Abuelita, her dad's mom. 
She was warned by Teresa, then as La Abuelita, to stay inside for a month. Stay indoors. Do not leave the house for one month. Not exactly sure why. But during that time, Abuelita was babysitting a lot. Babysitting Madison's cousins. And they lived down the street. And for whatever reason, couldn't couldn't stay in the house, had to go drop them off or pick them up. She leaves the house for the first time. On the way to Madison's cousin's house, uh, trips on a curb and shatters her kneecap. She's rescued, taken to the hospital, and they start operating on her. During the operation, Grandma gets a heart attack. No. Luckily, Grandma lives. Uh, she's fine. She's kicking. She recovered. Well, she ain't kicking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, bad choice of words. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but they believe that, you know, or they're, they're connecting those dots, you know. Mm-hmm. You were warned. You were warned. Continuing uh, with uh, La Abuelita's uh, rituals and advice. I might need some confirmation from this, but I'm going to try. I I read over this bit a handful of times. But La Abuelita, just through her interactions with Madison, could tell some of Madison's desires and one of Madison's supposed desires that uh, La Abuelita could deduce was that uh, she didn't want to live with mom anymore and that she wanted to live with dad. She, La Abuelita goes to dad and tells him to ensure that you have your daughter. You can have her around. You need to gift me 12 white roses and a doll. He believes her, buys the dozen roses, all white, and the doll gifts it to, to La Abuelita. And a month later, mom, uh, for whatever reason, was facing a crisis where she was forced to be homeless and basically forced uh, Madison out of mom's home where she then moved in with dad uh, indefinitely. So that was La Abuelita. I can't remember if she makes a comeback here. I think she does maybe at one point. Uh, the next story, Madison had bracelets. I think her and her siblings all had, had bracelets. And uh, these were evil eye bracelets. Ooh. Uh, she says, I, I had the evil eye bracelets before. It was cool. <laughs> um, and she said, I know it, was, uh, it wasn't cool yet because we had to wear multiple. Uh, at one point, I had five on my wrists. And I remember kids laughing at me for these weird bracelets and having so much of them on my wrists. But uh, supposedly, if the bracelet breaks, that means harm was supposed to come upon you. And the bracelet did its job in protecting you. When the bracelet breaks, you're supposed to leave it or uh, cast the remnants of the bracelet into the river. There wasn't any further elaboration on that, but cool, like, little, uh, yeah, artifact almost. Uh, not artifacts, not all, but yeah, yeah, talisman kind of thing. So th- all of this happened through like elementary ages, elementary school ages. Now she reaches middle school. She already has so many experiences. Yeah, it's a lifetime. Normally, uh, La Abuelita or Teresa would uh, do her healing rituals and cleanse people with sage. And she, sometimes uh, she said, I remember La Abuelita coming to our house and leaving behind like ro- a trail of like rose petals. But this one specific time we needed her to perform a cleanse. And this time was different. She brings a brown paper bag. You've never seen that before. In the brown paper bag is a chicken. She takes out the chicken. She's holding it. The chicken's like flapping around, flapping around. She starts saying a prayer. And Madison is watching this whole thing evolve. While La Abuelita is saying the prayer, the chicken becomes docile. And then goes limp to the point where it's almost paralyzed. It looks dead, but it's like paralyzed and like 
making small coups instead of like loud and obnoxious. Pollo no loco. <laughs> <laughs> so La Abuelita grabs a chicken after the prayer and starts wiping the chicken on our heads and on our bodies. On all the members of Remember the Remember an egg blessing? Oh. Yeah. What came first? The chicken or the egg? <laughs> this one is like level two blessing. Uh, this is the adult version of the blessing. Um, starts wiping this, this limp chicken on our heads and on our bodies. When that's finished, she takes it outside and breaks its neck. And that was a very unique ritual. It sounds like that was the only time they experienced that, but uh, uh, essentially a chicken cleanse. You really only need that once. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you transfer whatever to the chicken and then end that. And that seems to like make the payment. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's intense, bro. Moving on. The shrine. Abuelita had a shrine inside her house with a bunch of different saints. Mary. I don't know who the other saints are. I'm not very familiar. Um, Guadalupe. But, bro, I think I might like this one the most out of all the stories. But Abuelita started inviting spirits to come to the house so she can take care of them. And in the shrine in front of the house, she would start uh, setting things up to like uh, welcome these spirits. And what she said outside was a stool, cigarettes, an ashtray, and a match. And they, their living room was right when you walked into the house. And they're on the couch chilling, watch TV. The couch is five feet away from the entrance so they can see right there. And Madison said, I would watch these cigarettes get lit. And... There was one point where I saw as if somebody took a long drag from the cigarette because you could see it lighting up from the front and then the smoke going out all on its own. She said Abuelita would get so excited she would call us to watch when we were kids. We'd run over, or I guess she's in middle school, we'd, we'd run over and we'd watch as cigarettes get lit and smoked in front of their house. Abuelita also had a spirit stick and some dolls. The spirit stick was uh, made up of beads, feathers, and chicken blood. They were paired together, sitting on very on designated chairs in the living room. And with the dolls, Abuelita uh, would constantly always had uh, food, water, flowers, and candles as offerings for them to take care of them, welcome them. And uh, Madison said, we were always supposed to act like they weren't there, you know, pay no attention. That's just every day until one day, my sister walked into the living room and saw one of the dolls rocking in a separate chair. And she can't believe her eyes. She's looking and she blinks and the doll was back in its designated nope. chair. Hard pass. Okay. Is that is that it for the doll story? Yeah. Do you remember the doll story I shared? Which one? Our when? Mexican How long homie. Ago? One of our Mexican homies, she's half Mexican, half Chinese. Like the ones? But she no, she was at her Mexican grandparents' house and she said to this day she like doesn't want to go there. But oh, they yeah. had this huge doll that would sit by the front door. And she oh, said yeah. one time she was in the back room. She heard a noise. She looks toward the front door and the doll is halfway down the hall towards her. That. Anyway, dude, this isn't a, that, that's it with the dolls, but that's not the end of uh, the sister's trauma. <laughs> Jeez. So apparently this is the first time I've heard of this. Uh, Mexicans believe or some Mexicans believe that lice attach themselves to people with depression. Hmm. Which, uh, in I'd be my case, if maybe I had, has, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, came first. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, to cleanse people of lice and effectively depression. Uh, 
Everyone take notes. Yeah, take notes. Uh, I, I, I think this came from La Abuelita, but you were supposed to strip yourself naked and bathe in chicken blood. Sister had lice. Sister was cleansed. What? Dude, I always heard like tomato sauce. Bro, well, that's cheap. Not, yeah, I mean, wow, we could barely afford food, so. <laughs> sister had lice. Sister was cleansed. And from Madison's email, I don't think admits to that story um, to this day, but she never had lice ever again. Damn. She never had depression ever again. So, uh, some people in chat saying, I don't know if that's true because I've never had lice. <laughs> <laughs> this is the secret that pharma doesn't want you to know about. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken's blood. Yeah. Uh, dude, Matt, that's all these chicken processing plants are, are getting going attacked down across dude. America right Wait, now. Wait, don't we have a shortage of chickens? Yes. Chicken wings. And they get too. plagued. And the eggs, like the egg factories and shit. They're all burning down. Dude, I just woke up with bugs in my ear. Dude, end times. We're in the final days. The final That's countdown. The, Bible. the final <laughs> countdown. Dude, dude if, that, if that played while like Jesus was coming out the dude. clouds, that'd be, <laughs> the <laughs> he'd, goat. he'd just be crit walking down <laughs> <laughs> dude, on, my- on a Nimbus, a uh, Nimbus 2000 <laughs> dog. <laughs> you know, Jonathan from... Queer eye for the straight guy. Yes, I want long, Jesus Jonathan's so long hair, bad right? To be, yeah, oh, I want him to, to be Jesus to too. Look and act like that. It comes I just down want him to like, be We're Jesus. about to make over your lives, <laughs> <laughs> your eternal salvation. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm in. I'm yeah. in. Yeah. Make me over, dude. Okay, we took a, a way a, left. A, fa- a fabulous uh, Messiah. <laughs> yeah, I'm about it. Um, someone, Matt, bring, someone in chat brings up a really good point. What's hmm. up? To bathe in the blood of a chicken. How many chickens? I was thinking the exact same thing, dude. That's a lot of chickens. That's a lot of chickens. Can you just like cut off one of its heads and like have it s- like squirt blood on this you? This is a chicken blood shower. Now. Is that technically? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's not a bathe. Oh, just like zip tie it to the ceiling and just like <laughs> lop that head off. And it's just like, bro, you're morbid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get rid of this depression. Dog, so. <laughs> We're just trying to find out the easiest yeah, way. Chickens yeah. are, you know, going out of style right now. They're dying. Uh, Madison's in high school at this point. And uh, the stories are graduating too, dude. <laughs> they move because dad gets remarried. And she's excited because she doesn't want to deal with all the crazy spirits and uh, all of these paranormal things happening at Abuelita's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just hyped to be away. <laughs> that is until <laughs> <laughs> she believes it followed her. Oh, Madison's a light sleeper and a still sleeper. Just like you. She can go to sleep in one position and wake up in the exact same position. While sleeping in this new house, I think they're, they were there for like a couple of months until she kept waking up to the blankets, heavy blankets, comforters, being pulled off of her body and down to her ankles with no one in the room no, to do dude. that. Hell no. That's just rude. And she said it constantly happened. She said, putting together me being a light sleeper, and a still sleeper, I know I wasn't pushing it off my body. Mm-hmm. And I was able to wake up to see. Okay, maybe not see it happen, but like see the result of it. Yeah. You know, um, being pulled down to my ankles. She said, it happened so often that I would verbally confront whatever was doing that. And it started out as, in the name of Jesus, like, leave me alone. You know, leave this place, leave my house, leave my room. And then it started getting to, you're irritating. (laughs) I'm not dealing with this anymore. (laughs) And taught herself to just ignore it to the point where it wouldn't phase her and she would just sleep through it all. Give it no power. Give it no mind. Yep. So she's in the new house. Same, same. And she's the only one who's uh, experiencing this. No one really believes her uh, until people start experiencing th- things on their own. But it sounds like it took some time to get to, to that point. 
started with mom. Mom started getting, or my new stepmom started getting mad sleep paralysis. So, okay. There was a night where we were, uh, I heard knocking on uh, my window and this happened at three in the morning. Look through the window. Nobody was there. Then for a while, up until four o'clock, they hear noises in the kitchen up until then. Uh, before that, everyone's sleeping. The house is quiet. They hear uh, things dropping, pots, pans, and they're, they're freaked out. They work up the courage, and finally at 4 o'clock, they walk out, and they creep around the hallway, look around the corner, and to their surprise, the kitchen is absolutely spotless and it's undisturbed. It's a nice ghost. It's cleaning. Uh, a troll, though. <laughs> you know. So now everybody's in on it. Not in on it, but has experienced it, and yeah. they believe her. Uh, they move into a new house. And so new, uh, sister's room is getting renovated, so they have to share a room for a while. And on one of these nights, she gets ready for bed. And they both climb in. Uh, they, they get ready to go to sleep, and they, and they, they climb into bed. And uh, they're starting to doze off. Five minutes into them dozing off, Madison's sister smacks Madison in the head. With her elbow. Ow. And she turns around to chew her out. And her sister's not there. Uh, hell. And she's looking. Her sister's in the bathroom, still getting ready for bed. And she says, were you just in the bed with me? She says, no, I've been in the bathroom this whole time. Did you throw something at me? No, I've been getting ready for bed, minding my own business over here. That creeped her out. And that was that in the in their room in that new house. In that same house, though, she came home one day uh, after school. House is empty. Nobody's there. So, as one teenager does, she hops on the hub, throws on some headphones. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait. She opens up the prawn, and she just mind in her business. Until the door in her room that was shut opens up a third of the way. You're already like on guard at that point. Yeah. No, uh, I think she th thinks she's in a safe space. But I mean, like, regardless of a spirit or a human, it's like you wouldn't want anyone to come in. Oh, outside. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It instantly puts her on guard. Yeah. Door opens up a third of the way. Pauses. She's caught red handed. Yes. And promptly shuts oh. all the way. She said, as, it was as if somebody peeked in to watch me. <sighs> and that was absolutely terrifying. Big nope. Big nope. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, I think that's uh, La Abuelita telling you to stop masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Madison graduates from high school. Talk about real quick. Talk about invasion of privacy. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you're never alone. Yeah. So buddy in chat said, it's the boner killer. <laughs> for real. <though>. Coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, not only scary, but just like, so creepy. Invasion like of actual yeah. creep. Yeah. Personal space. Yeah. Madison graduates from high school. She's in college now. Uh, I don't know if they were out in college or if they're living at home or if they're visiting, but uh, her sister uh, starts to get sleep paralysis. Uh, and one night wakes up to her sister screaming, screaming bloody murder, not bloody murder, specifically screaming. It touched me. Ooh. Uh. So they, they turn on the light and uh, she's trying to console her. She's hysterical. And, Sure as day, there are scratches on sister's body. And that's the most recent experience and the final experience. Uh, Wait, so this in, is like ongoing? In her, uh, in her email, in her anthology that she sent us. 
uh, yeah, I guess it is ongoing. It's just like a bunch of random different happenings going on. At the end, uh, Madison said, I was going to send pics of the dolls, but I didn't want to upset them. Uh, yeah. yeah, we don't want that in our, in our, in our already plagued house. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, if we get a suspiciously large package in the P.O. box. We're not. Oh, we're not opening it. Yeah, we might have to shut the P.O. box down. So <laughs> don't be sending us haunted shit or the P.O. box gets taken away real quick. Uh, we often tell stories or talk to people who seem to be on the other side. Yeah. The events happen. It was in the past. Mm-hmm. We've moved past it. There's been a couple times where it's like, this is Ongoing. happening right now. Yeah. And it's always such a different feeling Mm -hmm. because for me most of the time scary stories are fun lighthearted but these ones i'm like man i hope i hope you're okay yeah i hope everything's okay and yeah you're doing your best to stay safe this is wild like uh she like she grew up with this it's like normal like her whole family is like yeah let's go to like church santeria church (laughs) pitch black they're wearing white yeah yeah this 40 year old lady's 90 (laughs) <laughs> she's rubbing chickens on us like <laughs> it's this like yeah okay. please we need your help and yeah it's uh <laughs> you don't listen to me i'm break uh, you're gonna break your knee yeah <laughs> like yeah uh and they continue to go to that church <laughs> and uh have these experiences when they don't go to that church and they move away and uh it follows it follows uh dude madison thank you for sending those stories i'm sorry uh I was kind of fragmented in telling those stories, so I hope I did it justice. The collective sum of those stories is terrifying. Yeah, 100%. Um, But she's in chat, and she said, thank you. It's been so normalized in my family. I'd figure I'd share with everyone. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Big bless. That's me tonight. Crazy. Seal it with a spritz of Lucas. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I remember my first Lucas, dude. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm a Lucas amateur. <laughs> Lightweight. All right. Thank you, DJ. It's me. Crazy you shared stories on that, Deej? Because we're staying in the same world. <gasps> Let's go. It's a two-peat. Viva la Mexico. From Kentucky to Mexico. Mexico. Okay. Real quick, I'm going to go over two lists. One. Uh, this was put out by like KVEU. I think it's like Austin's local news <laughs> in honor of Mexican Heritage Month. Tight. Here's some Hispanic superstitions we all grew up believing. So that's a that's a if you didn't grow if you're Hispanic and you didn't grow up with these, sorry. <laughs> Never place your purse on the floor. Interesting. Placing your bag on the floor will cause you to lose money. Have bad luck with money. It's also a great way to get bacteria all over your back. Okay, that last one. That one makes sense. (laughs) Itchy palms means money. Sweater on the uh, spaghetti already. (laughs) (laughs) Itchy palms means money is in your future. Ooh, my palms be hella itchy right now. If your palm itches, don't scratch it. Not scratch it. No, dude, we were in Portland and it was cold on the coast and like, my palms were itchy. I was just scratching the hell out of them. You <laughs> had no! it and you lost it. <laughs> I'm so sad. Don't even try to relieve it by rubbing it on the table or doorknob or anything. This means money is in your future. Embrace the burn. It will pay off soon. Embrace the burn. Put a Gladly broom on the future. upside down behind a door. It's warding off unwanted visitors and energy. So next time you don't, well, I want the in-laws to stop by. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Don't sweep a single woman's feet. We kind of, we talked about that, like the sweeping. That's an Appalachian thing as well. Yeah. Like having When a you're broom, sweeping though. with a broom, be careful not to sweep your own feet. Yeah. You can sweep them off their feet though. <laughs> hey, that's what I always be doing. <laughs> She'll never get married if you not, do that. Not, oh, damn. Stakes are high. Oh, <laughs> That's such a that's a high consequence for such like a tiny. Action, I'm just gonna you know? go around sweeping people's feet. You're so on straight to jail. Sweep the feet straight to jail. <laughs> this one: eat twelve grapes before midnight on New Year's Eve. For each grape you eat, you make a wish for each month of the year. Hell yeah, I'm gonna do that. 
Run around the block with a suitcase on New Year's Eve. Dude, New Year's is busy. Yeah. With a suitcase. Don't buy family or friends knives or scissors as gifts. This oh. means that the relationship will be broken. Bro, that one time I bought that. Uh, what? Why are you freaking out? Because I, uh, I, I bought a, uh, a past girlfriend. <laughs> She's really into cooking. I bought her her first chef's knife <laughs> and for her birthday. And we went to like a cooking class for her birthday too, and then broke up like a month later. <laughs> If only we had had this episode before that. Pinche cabrón, DJ. <laughs> Como dude, se say I truth, am, I, am, I am dead ass the afflicted this entire episode, dude. <laughs> Bugs flying in my ears, scratching my damn palms. <laughs> Let's find out how else DJ's life is effed, shall we? Uh, anyway. Many stories we talk about, many legends are born out of what? Parents trying to scare the shit out of their kids. Yes. Because they don't want them to do a particular actions. The the forest, the jungle is dangerous. Guess what? There's a man who lives in there who will kidnap you and kill you. Yeah. It's the poor man's parenting. <laughs> it's like scare the shit out of your kids so they don't do bad things. This also exists in the Mexican culture. A lot of stories of uh, warnings to try and keep your kids safe from doing stupid things. Yeah. Or unsafe things. Uh, this story comes to us from a repeat storyteller. Let's go. Shout out the homie Jasmine. Jasmine has shared a story with us before. Do you remember the fuzzy demon story? They that lived, was recent. They lived in an apartment. She sent pictures. I want to say right. Mexico. Yeah. She sent drawings. That's right. Yes. And the cousin went in there while everyone was out partying. Yep. Saw it later that night. Drunk dad jokes about it. And says, if you're here, show us. And in the middle of the room, they all the adults here. If you haven't heard that story, go back. It's the fuzzy demon in a previous episode. Jasmine sent in another story. Jasmine is Mexican. Grew up in a very Mexican household. I can't remember exactly where she lived. And I can't remember if it's her parents that came from Mexico. But I know 100% her grandparents at least grew up in Mexico. I want to say her, her parents might have to and come over. So she shared a quick story. We were chatting as she's setting in the stories and she's, and I was like asking her how much she thinks like these are real. And she's like, obviously like a lot of stories are shared to just to scare kids. Mm -hmm. She remembers um, being told that once there was a guy who lived with his mom, he was super disrespectful and treated her bad. One day he left the house after a nasty argument with her saying something to her like, I wish the devil would come and kill a horrible woman like you. Shoot. And he leaves the house. <laughs> did, he, did he eat a grape at the same time? <laughs> and a suitcase and a itchy palm and he bought her a knife. And when he came back at night, he found her dead in a river of her own tears. Cry me a river. <laughs> The devil came to him and said he had granted his wish and now he owed, owed him his soul. Oh shit. So she said that, that was like a pretty common, like that's the type of story they were told as kids. Like, yo, don't be a little shit. Be good to your parents. Otherwise <laughs> your soul is going to the devil. Yeah. <laughs> that's so next level. <laughs> Dude, I just uh, induced trauma. Like this the Fear of God. Yeah, this might be parenting. extremely, what's it called, <laughs> stereotyping, but I grew up in Visalia, California. 80% of the people are Mexican. A lot of my homies are Mexicans. And bro, I remember like in first grade kindergarten, all my Mexican homies just knew everything before every white kid. Like they grew up <laughs> watching Chucky was like their favorite movie. You know what I'm saying? It's like they just know shit. They're exposed to shit quick. I swear they'd be like laughing at Shout it out. too. Oh yeah, like yeah, from yeah. An early age, I'm not dying scared. and they're yeah. laughing. Anyway, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they, they. So Jasmine talks about a lot of these stories they thought were funny, but some of them were more serious. Um, like there was stories about wild animals and you need to be careful. And a lot of them they laughed at, but she said legitimately some of them terrified her because her great grandma was literally killed and eaten by wild boars. What? So she's like, yes, some of them were in jest. Some of them were funny, but 
some of them were serious and needed to be taken serious. And the story she shared, the one I'm about to share, is one of those stories. We're going back. A la Mexico. 1950s. This happened to Jasmine's great, great grandparents. It might be, it's in a town. Uh, Sean? Guerrero? Mexico. In the 1950s, small village, small Mexican village. Early one morning, all the villagers are kind of awoken by a commotion. They come out of their homes, and many of them see down the main road in the village a trail of blood. Quickly concerned, they quickly follow it, and at the end of this trail of blood, they find a body torn cut, ridden with bullet holes, and dead. Going back, classic Mexican town, decently small. Most of the inhabitants know each other. Uh, They're all, it's pretty tight-knit, right? There's a sense of safety. People might not be locking their doors. People trade. People know each other. And it's, it's an idyllic place to live. But that is quickly changed at first they thought it was a one-off incident when the first child fell sick but after the second the third the fourth after the fifth newborn passes away they come to a conclusion that their small town their village their family is under attack plagued they realize they have a greater problem on their hands Something's attacking the children. Fear sets in. Distrust sets in. Who is it? What's happening? They do everything in their power to offset this, to protect their family, to protect their kids. And many start visiting the white witches. They get blessing from these white witches. They use holy water. They stay up at night. Some of the men get together, patrol the streets. And still... Child after child falls sick. Not all of them die, but many of them drained, tired, sick, unhealthy. And still they can't figure out what's going on. Many turn to the white witches to have their children blessed. They believed witches were women who made a pact with the devil and by doing so were able to give blessings. They give blessings with holy water, and the thought, or another different type of blessings, and the thought was that that would prevent whatever was happening from happening to their kids. But it's try- always, it's always, uh, hist- history shows always the women who always eat the apple, become make a pact with the <laughs> devil. Yeah, they really witches. do be bringing us down. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Uh, truly, though, try as they might, child after child continues to get sick. They start to feel hopeless, clueless. They have no idea what's happening. Until one night. One night, a family shuts the house down, locks all the doors, triple checks the windows, puts the kids to sleep all in one room at the center of the house, or at the back of the house, rather. Mother and, da- mother and father turn off the last light and go to sleep. Middle of the night, mom wakes up. Mother's intuition, bad feeling. She can hear their dog whimpering. First thought, go to the children. She runs to the child's room, throws open the door, and sees all her kids in bed. But they're not alone. Oh, shit. In the bed? Leaning in close, almost touching her youngest child's nose with its nose. She sees a black cat. And the black cat is uh, sucking the essence out of the kid's nose. Like a dementor? Oh, shite. Cat looks up. Mom makes eye contact. Sprints towards the kids. And almost as if supernatural, the cat 
out the previously locked window and gone. Holy hell. Now the town knows what they're dealing with. It's a black witch. And she is sucking the life out of these children. Jasmine said, side note, to this day, her family has never allowed cats to fall asleep like in the house with them because of this story. Damn. Okay. Okay. Now the town knows they're dealing with a black witch who's appearing, shape-shifting into this cat and sucking the life out of kids. Still on high alert. Now they know what they're dealing with. They can defend against it better, but kids are still going down. Mm -hmm. They have no idea who it is. They have no idea what it is. Till one night at a local bar, several of the men are drinking, maybe playing pool, playing cards, dominoes. I don't know what, but an argument breaks out as it so often does when alcohol is involved. And not only does this argument break out, but it escalates. The men get into a fight. One of the men cocks back, right hooks another guy, knocks him to the ground, jumps on top of him, and starts wailing. The man on the ground thrashing, trying to block his face out of desperation and fear, says, you better stop right now. The man holds his fist, and he goes, if you continue, my mom will curse you because she knows black magic oh he just hella doxed her <laughs> I, don't make me say it say it don't make me say it say it say it i don't care that you broke your elbow <laughs> whoever threw that your mom's a hoe <laughs> type energy fist in the air he looks down the bar quiet everyone looks over and he smashes the shit out of this guy <laughs> beats him to within an inch of his life F- you f- your mom i don't care hell yeah let's go goes home for the content thanks dude for making (laughs) brash decisions later that night man's in his home he's sleeping house is locked not a care in the world until he's woken up by a crash in the next room that's weird runs to the next room opens the door it's dark but he can see there in the light from his doorway His new puppy, bloody, crumpled, as if it's been stomped to death. Oh! Immediately heartbroken, he rushes into the room, about to scoop up the dog, when he realizes he's not alone. And he sees the outline of a huge, dark creature. And the creature goes... And exhales and starts to charge. And a several hundred pound boar tears through his living room, knocking furniture aside right at the man. He jumps, dies, narrowly avoids the boar, grabs his pistola and lets off shots round after round. Bang, bang, bang right into the boar and it doesn't slow at oh, all wow. it just continues to charge if not more ferociously and faster entire clip bang 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 every single one hit the boar doesn't deter it at all throws the gun right at the boar jumps again narrowly missing it for a second time he goes to the last resort every mexicano household no, i'm just kidding he grabs Chunkla. his machete. <laughs> that was a good guess, though. <laughs> and fueled by the death of his beloved puppy, he starts hacking as mad as he can at this boar. Hell yeah, bro. We Every have- slash, more and more blood. Every slash, chunks of flesh fall from the boar until finally it turns and runs out the open front Survives? Door, leaving pissed. a trail of blood. Holy cow. The Follow- man Runs Follow. after the boar. Yes. He wants dude. revenge. Goes right through town to the outskirts of town. Sun is coming up. And what he finds is the body of an old woman with shots all in her. Machete hacked all through her. 
Gasping for breath, bloodied, and looking right at him, she points and mouths words and falls, dead. Immediately, townspeople come out, and what they see is a man covered in blood, holding a machete, standing over the frail old body of a woman. Not a good luck. Not a good luck. Quickly, he starts trying to defend himself, Uh, but somehow the village people's mind is made up against him, and he's thrown in jail. Good, dude. Good. Wait, isn't this the... I think you missed a part. The dude who beat up? Yeah, but he yeah found and caught the witch. Then the black witch witch came after him, and he attacked the boar witch. It's okay. okay. Let me continue. Let me finish. They said to the day he died, that man... Defended what he said, despite maybe offerings of being let off. He said, no, like that was a black witch. And after that, the attacks did stop. Damn. I don't know if it was a curse, her dying last words, but he went to jail. Dude, yeah, both so stories, well. people getting caught red handed. I <laughs> Dude, imagine like facing the town and trying to explain. Uh, what just uh, like, uh, 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 uh. Old ladies don't make good chicharron, you know? <laughs> no mas. Live Moss. <laughs> so, I don't know. Was this a story that was made up just to scare the kids? I'll let you decide. That's real for Me sure. Me and Jasmine don't think so. <laughs> There's something more to the story. But that is the end of the story. Damn. <sighs> she said that's a story that's been passed down in her family uh, where her like family members were directly involved. And that is the story. That's wild. Of the Black Witch. That's wild. Turn into the pig. Just get hacked Mauled, to death. Maul the pupper. I'm so sad. Oh, this is now got water on it. I'm oh, so sad. Think about, about the, the similarities, dude, between skinwalkers and like black witches. Once your identity is known, yeah. Yeah, and just like the shape shifting, the tormenting. It's very shape shifting is very symbolic in any of those types of things. I'm so anyway. sad about the dog. For real, that's f- messed up. Shout out, Jasmine. Thank you for the story. It was rad. Okay, let me finish this off tonight. Before I get into my story, I know that we've talked about this before, but want to just kind of touch on it again. Do you, either of you, have any phobias? Uh, if you count my... <laughs> if you count my... Uh, Folding paper with your fingernail. Okay. That's my phobia. Okay. That, that we'll count it. We'll count it. (laughs) I mean, I don't love spiders, but I don't think I necessarily have arachnophobia. Yeah. I don't love heights, but I think I'm fine. I went skydiving and it was totally okay. Yeah. uh, Someone who was afraid of heights, a phobia level would not do that. Deep, deep ocean is, is a little rough. Thalassophobia. Only if I'm like, swimming in it when my feet leave the ground in the ocean i'm like okay Uh, we're in a different world really what about when we uh went shark diving i guess not you aren't you could see though you had like them goggles on you could see the sharks below you you're talking about when you're swimming on shore and you start wading out a little bit and like your toes are just scraping the bottom well i go hard i I, like i will go out there to the point where I, i know i'm like 30 feet up And the Kraken is obviously. And if I'm alone, Mm. that makes a difference too. So maybe I don't. Never mind. Scratch that. (laughs) DJ, any phobias? I don't think I have any phobias, to be honest. Why? You talk about phobias tonight? Just a fear of failure. Uh, Yeah, what is is the the phobia of failure? (laughs) (laughs) Is this the topic tonight? Phobia? A little bit. So, first of all, I want to talk about something that genuinely is kind of scary to me. And that would be getting lost, Mm. which both of you know, like I'm pretty like solid with my direction and I've legitimately tried to get lost before and couldn't do it. We were in Portland and uh, we were driving to a hike and I said, Sean, don't look at any instruments. What direction are we going right now? It's like, well, it's two 30. I'm looking at the shadows of the trees on this road and we're go- we're headed due east, directly east. Pull out my phone. Exactly east. 
So you're a freak. I am a little bit. It's dope. It's dope. It's a good freak. Good but freak. like the thought of legitimately being lost is kind of terrifying. That would make sense because it's like completely out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So I want to tell you a story that happened in 1994. And let me back up real quick too. Do you guys know, uh, are you familiar with the sport of ultra racing? Do you, like just ultra marathon? Just like, yeah, what yeah. it is. hundred mile races. And anything over a marathon length is considered an ultra marathon. Okay. So there is a race in Northern Africa, in Morocco, called Marathon de Sables. And in 1994, a man named Mauro Prosperi, an Italian citizen, decided to enter this race. And he was an accomplished runner. Like he ran all his life. He was even a gold medalist in a previous like uh, Olympics. So he was a, a very like trained runner and all the way up to this race, he was running like 40 kilometers is what it said. But I don't know the conversion rate to miles right now off the top of my head. That's like 28 miles or something every day. And he was reducing his water intake every day to get used to running in essentially what was the Sahara desert. Now this is hard enough alone. <laughs> you add desert, you add distance. lack of water, yeah. you add distance. So this, this race, Hidalgo? dude, straight up this mile or this race is 156 miles long <laughs> in the Moroccan Sahara desert. What would you have to be paid to participate in that? I think he actually paid to participate in this. <laughs> I mean, that's how all marathons are. It's like, Oh, you're running 24 miles. Yeah. yeah. I'll pay 50 bucks for that. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's actually more than that. Jeez. Anyways, it's 156 miles long and he's going to follow a route that basically takes him around 20 to 30 miles a day. That's <laughs> so easy, dude. Does he get a 156 mile sticker to put on his car he after? Better get a 156 <laughs> mile sticker. Um, but along the way, there are going to be checkpoints where uh, there's like water stations, stuff like that. So he will have kind of a bag of supplies with him, but he'll be able to have like checkpoints where he can refill on water and stuff like that. About three days into this race, there's probably only about a hundred participants or so. So along a race, 156 miles long, you're generally running by yourself. Everyone is going at their own pace about three days into this race. He's in fourth place. He's keeping a very good pace and only has a few days left. However, the temperature rises to about 105 Fahrenheit <sighs> And with that arose a, sta a sandstorm, a haboob, a haboob <gasps> in the Moroccan desert. He has a choice. He can either stop and wait it out or keep racing. If he stops, he legitimately does have the risk of being buried in the sand because he's not, he's not near shelter. He's out in this desert, but Keep going, my guy. Keep going. If he keeps racing, additionally, it's going to be hard to navigate this trail. Morrow decides he's going to keep racing to maintain his lead. He felt like he could still get a good grasp of where the trail was going. So he continued racing. He raced, and this sandstorm lasted for about eight hours. As he continued to race, though, these Digga, digga, do. Super yeah. <laughs> heated sand particles just being swirled around him. Eventually, he's racing with blood from his nose and from his mouth as he's having to breathe this in. A lot of red flags here. I don't recommend this ultra marathon. <laughs> Nor paying for it. <laughs> it finally died after about eight hours. And at this point, Mauro Prosperi decides to lay down and sleep for the day and start again at it tomorrow. He wakes up in the morning and realizes he's not on the trail. So he has to try and navigate his way back. He has to find out where he is. So he heads to one of the top of the sand dunes nearby. And what he sees 
is nothing but sand dunes in every direction. Now, the race protocol is that if this happens, you're supposed to stay there where you are and you'll be rescued. So he... Because I'm sure like they're probably waiting for you to check in at the next checkpoint. And if you don't, they're like, oh shit, we yeah. should probably go And fight. after a sandstorm, they're probably on high <laughs> alert. Yeah. So he decides to wait. After a while of waiting, off in the distance, he sees a helicopter. And all of the racers are all additionally equipped with a um, signal flare. So he sh- like gets excited, shoots off the signal flare. But it's not like these ones you see in the movies. It's like a pencil thin signal flare. <laughs> and this is in 1994. It's just like, throwing a glow stick. <laughs> current races. Yeah, essentially. Current races, they are equipped with bigger signal flares. But the one he shot off was not detected by the helicopter and they fly right over him. Now, at this point, he's like, I don't know what to do. I can't just stay here now. So he decides to try and go the direction of the helicopter. And he heads off into the desert. I mean, he's in the desert, but he's just further going into the desert. And eventually, he gets to an old abandoned Bedouin shrine in the middle of the desert. And I have a picture for you. Oh, hell yeah. So it is that one right there. This is the shrine. So uh, the first picture is him. And this is also him like at the shrine. It looks like Adam Sandler. Oh, okay. And this it is, is Adam the- Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> Sandum say, okay. So eventually he finds this old abandoned shrine. And for the next two days, he makes his home at this shrine. Now it's been, it's been a long time since he hit one of the checkpoints as well. So he's out of water Oh, to survive. He's sucking on wipes and drinking the dew off of the rocks in the morning. And he discovered a, what is the group name of bats? Just a flock. No, (laughs) Swarm. A swarm of bats living in one of the like roofs of these the shrine. So he kills them and drinks their blood. Oh, he's trying to live. <laughs> he's trying to live. After two days of being at this shrine, nothing. And then he noticed an airplane flying above. So with a glimmer of hope, he runs out and starts like riding an SOS in the sand. But this plane is not changing direction. So in a last ditch effort, he lights his backpack on fire to send up a smoke like flame or flare for them with all his stuff. Oh, well he would have taken it out. Yeah. He took his stuff out, (laughs) but he lights his bag on fire. Now, as it starts picking up smoke, so does another sandstorm. No. (laughs) And it comes out of nowhere, blowing the SOS out and just destroying the smoke plant. <laughs> this dude is <laughs> And somebody in chat said uh, more than one haboob is called haboobies. So. <laughs> this only man this is seen a double D haboobie, right? My here. man Two motorboating <laughs> out here in the Sahara, you know? <laughs> now, this storm lasted approximately 12 hours. Oh, even oh, longer. My but gosh. fortunately for him, he had this shrine to like stay in big, big, if true. Yeah. Now this has been five days out in the desert oh my gosh. off course from this trail that he was running. And at this point he has a choice to stay here or leave again. And like at this point too, he's run out of water. He's run out of his food. Yeah. And part of like Italian law is that if someone disappears, you can't declare them legally dead for 10 years. So he's thinking if I go out and just disappear, my wife is not going to get my life insurance for 10 years. Oh, so I need to, I should just stay here where I'm going to die. And they'll never find him. And if they did find him, it could potentially be before 10 years. Yeah but then they would at least find him. So 
He's and st- he, so he's still at the shrine. He's still at the shrine. Not he decides leaving. that he has to stay. So he writes his final will or his final message on the walls of the shrine and decides to end it. So he takes out his little pocket knife to unalive himself and cuts both of his wrists and lays down to die. His body was later found by a search party several months later after the start of the race. Just kidding. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> the next morning, Maro Prosperi woke up and realized that due to lack of hydration and the tininess of the cut that he had made, all that had happened was the blood had scabbed over. <laughs> And he was still alive. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Now, taking this- I would be kind of salty. (laughs) All right, okay. (laughs) Can't can't shrine and dash on me, you know? (laughs) At this point, he actually takes it as a sign and is inspired. He decides he's going to leave. He now sees mountains off in the distance, and he decides he's going to go for those mountains. Because at least it's not sand dunes. I was going to say, it's just mountains of sand. (laughs) (laughs) So he heads off. During the day, he tries to stick to the shadows of the sand dunes or cliffs. And during the night, he tries to make up more ground. But in the Sahara, still reaching 105 degrees on a daily basis with no shade, minimal water. And eventually... After a day of trekking in this desert, the luckiest person in the world, he stumbles across an oasis. Ooh, but is it a mirage? He runs up to the little pond watered watered area, and because of his lack of energy and hydration, all he can do is lay there at the edge of the water and take small sips because that's all his body can handle. But it was an oasis. Now, after regaining some energy from water, he fills his water bottle with this water and heads further off into the desert towards these mountains. After trekking further, eventually he comes across fresh goat droppings. And he's a good sign because- He can follow those. He follows them and eventually comes across a little girl with a herd of goats. And he starts shouting for help. And it freaks the kid out. She's like, he's bleeding from the wrist. He's bleeding from the nose. He's speaking Italian and she runs away. (laughs) Yeah. Disappearing into the sand dunes. Bye. He follows after her for a few more hours and eventually comes across a traveling Bedouin tribe who assist him sacrifice him. <laughs> <laughs> and get him to a hospital after several days of lying in this hospital bed he eventually finds out just how far off track he was in this sandstorm and following days he had gone 180 miles off course how much how long was the race to begin with it's about 150. 100 and 50 so he's like doubled 156. Off well, course. He's, this is off, like if off you course. Were, so he had already run stuff. He had already run about 80 miles at that point. So he, my man's went 200, 260 miles. Like this is like if you're running a race in Las Vegas and accidentally almost got to Los Angeles. Damn, bro. What? That's how far off course he was. Fortunately for our guy, Mauro Prosperi, he did survive. However, due to obviously dehydration, he ended up drinking his own pee. He had oh, I'm sure. Hell yeah. kidney problems after this that were recurring because of the issues he had dealt with. And it took him a long, long time to fully recover from this, this incident. He did, however, go, and back, go back and run this race again Damn. and placed 13th. On this race. Well, it's not fourth. It's not fourth. He should have kept running. (laughs) But that's the kind of story that to me is just so wild and terrifying. Being lost. Nature of scary. Yeah. Like nature. Thinking about not being able to like know where I'm at is scary. Dude. Show this picture. 
Look at this triumphant bastard. This is this is our guy, Mauro Prosperi. He out there. Combined, all the races added up to the number on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> That's but really insane. though. Apparently, my favorite murder covered this. Oh, oh really? did they? Yeah. Oh, Great. sick. I did get a lot of my information just from uh, Googling. I found a YouTube video from a, um, I think their channel is Real Life Lore. Dope. So if you want to go and like learn a little bit more about it, go and watch the video or listen to My Favorite Murder. But I got one more. Oh, same we, vein or are we? Same vein. Hell yeah. Same oh, region. Yeah. And it is North, a North, similar North? region. The original North North. Let's talk about philosophobia fear of deep the ocean water deep water there now same region off the coast of africa different result and this will be for our patrons gang bro okay so if you want to listen to this go over to patreon.com slash the 3am pod you could become a patron listen to this bonus story and every bonus story else so that we have we'll be back soon bye we're back. We're back. And lucky to be alive. Yeah. Very lucky to be alive. Our boy That Harrison. story made me feel trapped. Bro. I was holding my breath that whole time. <laughs> yeah. I need some desert dessert after that. I mean, that would be nice. Anyway, thanks, Sean. <laughs> thanks, Sean, for the stories. <laughs> That's it for me tonight. <laughs> uh, hey, we can't win them all. Um, tonight was fun. What did we learn? Oh, dude. Uh, don't mess with Mexican witches. Yeah. Them's not nice. Don't run ultra marathons in the desert. Dude, that is a red flag. <laughs> to be honest though, I've thought about signing up for an ultra marathon. Do it. I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun. Cause I feel like I wouldn't actually be running. I would be more like speed walking. That's like the speed. A lot of the people will go at real quick. Uh, Rogan, Joe Rogan had a ultra marathon runner on. Did you hear that episode? Uh, was it David Goggins? No. Cause like legitimate, them. like a uh, hundred mile or plus 500 mile runners, whatever the stories they have are insane. Oh, they, I bet. they hallucinate. They get to a point where they're straight up hallucinating the entire time. <laughs> Damn. They're destroying your body. They'll, they'll be like, is that person there? And the, and they, they'll have like someone running with them to help them. And they're like, no, like ignore them. They're like, okay, hey, don't go that way. That person said, and they're like, no, one person said she had a team. She wanted to win. Uh, she wanted to win so bad. She was like, do not let me take breaks. Do not let me rest. And they're like, oh, we won't. Did they make a documentary of this? Did they? I think so. She falls to the ground. Like she falls to the ground in pure exhaustion and sleeps for hours. When she wakes up, she's like livid at her team. The f- dude, I wanted to win this thing. Why'd you let me sleep so long? And they said, you've been on the ground for like 30 seconds. But to her, it felt like eight hours, plus hours of yeah. sleep. Bro, anyway. I wish I had that superpower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. But ultra marathons are, are a wild thing. I mean, they, I would probably start with like 26.5. Just get over that marathon. <laughs> they also had the guy who, was, did he swim the English channel or the oh, entirety yeah, yeah. around the entirety, the entirety of the entirety UK? of the UK, yeah. So he'd like swim for like 12 hours, sleep on the boat that was following him for like six hours and, and then, then do that. He did that for like six months, six to eight months yeah. Jeez. swimming Ross every day Edgley, in the ocean. Yeah. Ross Edgley. So he seems like the most uh, kind, gentle dude. He doesn't but seem he's like, like he's jacked. Dude. He's jacked, bro. Just and he talks about um the salt destroyed oh, his yeah. tongue it was so f- much. He said he would wake up, he would wake up with pieces of his tongue on his pillow. Oh, that's my new phobia. <laughs> That's my new phobia. That's everyone's phobia. No one's like, <laughs> I want that. <laughs> no one is exclusively. That's the scariest not. thing of the pod tonight. And <laughs> with that, that's a great episode. Ross Edgley. Uh, <laughs> trust your gut, protect your tongue. Uh, be safe. Out there. <laughs> if you so choose to run an ultra marathon in the desert, be careful out there. Cool. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of 3AM. If you want to support us, visit our Patreon where patrons have access to exclusive content.
If you're not able to support us monetarily, don't worry. This episode is on us. You can still rate and review us on whatever platform you listen to us on. It really does go a long way. You can also follow us on social media. Our handle everywhere, including Patreon, is the 3 a.m. pod. Finally, do you have any scary stories? If so, submit them to our website, the3ampodcast.com. We love any audio or visual aids that can help bring your stories to life. So file uploads are welcome with your written submissions. We're anxious and excited to hear from you.